please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. My name is Dave Moss. For over 20 years now, I've been helping riders maximize the performance and life of the tires on their motorcycles. This is Contact Patch. Here we are at Button Willow with Let's Ride. Today we're going to go ahead and test the Pirelli Track Day tire. Here's a preview. As always, before we do anything, first thing and first order of business is to go ahead and measure what we've got. Yesterday's test was the Dunlop Q4s, and we need to understand from a geometry point of view and circumference or diameter what we've got, and when the new wheels go on, what we're dealing with. So on the front, our front gap is 25 millimeters. So that's where we're at on the front. Now let's go to the rear. 36 rear. So at this point now, we've got to go ahead, take the wheels off, get the tires changed, and then check what happened to the pitch of our chassis. The Dunlop we know is super soft. And the Pirelli is even softer. So that's going to need, again, high pressure to compensate with that. And then we'll do the same profile test. So on the profile test, we can see very different profile between fr both rear tires from the Q4 to the Pirelli. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how this turns because it's very different in shape. So front's different, rear di is different. We're gonna see if it turns faster or if it turns slower given what we experience on track. So in looking on the Pirelli website, we couldn't Google pressures that we should start with as cold defined. So in Googling, we found a test that was done here, specifically at this track, with relatively very close temperatures. In doing that and doing the research and aggregating the data from Google, we're gonna go with 27 rear, and we are gonna go with 29 front, and that will be our starting pressure. We can't say a cold pressure because it's 100 and something degrees. So, 29. Okay, 27. The track day tire is a response to the SP, which is a street tire. The track day tire is street legal as well, but it's supposed to be harder wearing, take longer. SPs can last one and a half to two days at the track. Uh, maybe 2,500 street miles. So in designing this tire, it's something to be more durable and last longer. So at that point, with the track and the temperatures we've got, we're gonna see what we get in terms of wear and how that works. And then we're gonna see on pressure where we go in regards to the carcass. Now these are very, very soft carcass tires. So on my initial ride out and scrub in, I'm going to evaluate, are they mushy? Is the pressure there too soft and they accelerate and I can feel the bike wallow on the side wall of the tire? But scrubbing is evaluation, so it's all about feeling. So we'll go ahead and scrub these in, and in doing so, I'm going to evaluate how the brakes work. Does the tire flatten out in profile? Do I need more air when I get on the gas? Does the contact patch get too big too quick and my line goes wide slightly? So it's going to be very interesting to see with a softer carcass how the bike rides given the pressures we're going to start with. Again, track day, therefore no tire warmers required. So we'll go out just as you would normally without the warmers scrubbing in and see what we get. So scrubbing lap is all about feeling your way around and what the tires are telling you for information. Nice and steady, obviously, to feel what's going on in the corners, how the front tire gives you feedback and information, and then on the exit, how much grip you get, how the contact patch changes under hard acceleration. So as we go into turn one, good braking stability, not very much movement in the windshield at all. On the fast side of the tire, we've still got a huge amount of debris here. So that's telling us that the pressure, the tire wants to go lower, a bigger contact patch. It's also really rough in here, very rough. 
to the point where that's accelerating the wear when we're going to full throttle. So very nice, easy roll, nothing dramatic. It comes over and goes over perfectly. Now reposition for the inside pass. Offline, brakes. Now, bringing it in, trail braking hard. I don't lose my line at all and exit the corner correctly. So, with the pressure changes, no changes in handling. Let's make the changes. We're gonna go three out on low speed and a quarter out on high speed and let's see how that works in the next rotation. So last session is all about consistency, putting in six to seven laps at 90, 80, 90% where I'm comfortable with the tires as they are to see over an extended run how the tires behave. Not an issue at all, acceleration or braking. Final test into sunset, nice and stable. Line it up, bring it into the sinkhole and drive back to full throttle. Awesome lap, tires felt fantastic. Let's go to the front. So with focus and attention to detail, braking consistent, doing the right thing at the right times, so all that pulsing's gone. So that was my lack of application in focus and concentration, doing the same thing at the same time. All in all, full pace for me, top of A group. Never once doubted the tire, especially the front, at all. Chucked it in and it held beautifully. The lower pressure on the rear made it squish a little bit and that doesn't resonate with me. I don't like that set feel and feel the tire bite the ground. That doesn't work for me personally, but for a lot of people it does. Did it impact the way I rode in my lap times? Not at all. So that front with the pressure, definitely stellar for me. Brilliant. And all the hypersports are very much on a par that way. Um, so a little bit more work to do with the rear before I come up with a summary on that one, but so far, no issues at all. Chuck it in the corner, get on the gas, go to full throttle, no fear whatsoever. So tremendous product. Question is, is it going to last? And we'll find out with our long-term test. Catch the full video at DaveMossTuning.com. Dave Moss can tune your suspension no matter where you are on the planet via his remote tuning service. Contact Dave on Facebook or by email, Dave at DaveMossTuning.com.